Whether you just set up your solar pump or it's been operating for a while, and it's not producing as much water as you want or none at all, today we're going to go through the troubleshooting steps to make sure you get your pump up and running and producing as much water as it should. By far one of the most common problems we see is lack of power to the controller and to the pump. And mostly that's due to either the sun angle, the time of day you're pumping, or obstructions casting shadows on the solar array. So if you just set up your system and it's night or evening, you might have to wait till the next day until you have a nice bright sunny day in order to test out your pump. The second most common you can see over on our array here is tilt angle. In this case, the angle is much too steep and if we adjust it to be pointing more towards the sun, we'll increase the water volume. If you're using our easy to use two or four panel mount, you're able to simply adjust it out in the field with two bolts. So let's we'll loosen the bolts, change the angle to be pointing right at the sun. Also in the link below, we have common tilt angles for your latitude and a calculator so you can figure out your precise tilt angle for summer, winter, or one angle for the throughout the entire year. So for now, this angle looks pretty good. And you can see we're getting quite a bit more flow now that we've adjusted the angle. So if your pump is pumping and you can hear it or you can see the pump light on but you're not getting any water, very likely there's not enough power getting to the pump in order to overcome your static water level and pump that water out of the well. The other thing you'll notice on these panels is we accidentally left our corner protectors on. So we want to make sure all of these corner protectors come off of our panels. So as you can see, as I walked across that panel in order to take off the corner protectors, the pump stopped pumping. Just that simple shadow from my head going across the ray was enough to cut out the pump. And it's gonna take a couple minutes and before it resets and starts pumping again. There we go, the pump's ramping back up to full seed and you'll be able to see we're getting quite a bit more flow than we were originally. The other very common cause of low water production is shadows on the solar array. So the way these solar panels are wired are all the cells are in series. So that means a small shadow on one part of the cell can current limit the production of the entire array. I can demonstrate with my hand going across the array and as you see, a small shadow from my hand significantly decreases water production. This can be caused by branches, fence posts, or anything else in the area. So you want to make sure you cut the area clean and don't let any shadows go on the solar array. Occasionally, it might look like your low well sensor is stuck on and the system won't operate. The most common cause is your low well sensor being out of the water or not being hooked up to your controller. So in this case, we want to hook up our low well sensor and make sure it's submerged in the water. Once it's submerged, we can always do a quick system reset, turn the power off, turn it back on, and then let the pump and controller start up normally. You can see the low well is turned off and the pump begins to pump. A much less common but still occasionally occurring issue is with the pumping mechanism, especially in the case of the helical rotor RPS 200 through 800. It has a rotor, which is stainless steel, inside of a rubber stator. If it's operated outside of the water, that stator can overheat, the rubber can melt, and your pump's not gonna pump. We've also seen wear out mechanisms after several years of usage where the pump's just not producing as much water as it did before, or if you have a bunch of sand or silt in your well, that can wear them out a bit faster. The final issue we've seen very rarely is debris coming back down the well and jamming the pumping mechanism. So if you've tried some of the other tests, you know you're getting power down to your pump. You might need to pull the pump and replace the pumping mechanism. Down in the description below, we have a video that shows you how to replace that pumping mechanism. It only takes about five to 10 minutes and then you'll be back up and pumping as good as new. A very common question we get is, what is this flashing MPPT light? That is actually the maximum power point tracking of the controller. So what the controller is always trying to do is it's trying to speed up and slow down the pump in order to optimize the power coming from the solar array, increase the amount of water production. So when this light is flashing, it means it's searching for the maximum power point. And if it turns solid, it means it's locked onto that power point. This is just for reference and really doesn't mean much in your day-to-day -day application. 
You probably notice inside your controller there's a speed control that goes from 0 to 10. Some guys like to turn this down in order to match the production of their well to their pumping volume in gallons per minute. Anytime we're doing troubleshooting on the system, we want to make sure this is turned up to 10. If it's turned down low, there can be some strange things that go with the system, such as your error light or your low power light coming on, even though we have plenty of sunlight. In this case, we've turned it back up to 10, and you'll see it's able to start up and it's going to be producing a high amount of volume. We can do our troubleshooting, make sure everything's working correctly. Then if you want, you can go ahead and turn that speed dial back down in order to match your well. So we've hooked everything up and unfortunately there's no lights on our controller. What that usually indicates is either your power switch is off. In this case, we've confirmed it's on. The other thing it means is that there's no power coming into the controller. And so the first thing you want to do is check all of your electrical connections. So we want to check these MC4s, make sure the wire's in tight, and make sure they're clipped together. Oh, I think I found the problem. So this one was a little loose. You want to make sure it's clipped together. And as you can see, the light turns right on and the pump will start pumping pretty quick here. The next issue is almost exclusively when you first set up your pump or when you've made changes to your pump wires and maybe something didn't get hooked up quite right. And that is when we turn on the pump, the power light comes on, the pump light comes on, we can hear the pump vibrating, but we're not getting any water. So if they're not labeled correctly or they fell off, then it's possible when you hooked them up, you may have reversed one of your pump wires. There's three wires, and if any one of those is in the wrong spot, it means your pumping mechanism is running backwards and you're not going to produce any water. In order to fix that, you can pick any two wires, one, two, or three, and swap them. And that will reverse the direction of the pump, and it'll check and see if you start pumping. But there's a caveat to that. If you've run it in the reverse direction, it's possible that the rotor has unscrewed from the motor shaft and is no longer connected. And that means you're going to have to pull your pump, you're going to have to take the pumping mechanism off, you're going to have to re-thread it on there, drop it back down your well, and then run it again. When you do that, we recommend testing in a bucket of water above ground, make sure everything's working properly, then drop it down back down your well. So those are some of the most common reasons why your pump may not be pumping or might not be producing as much water as you can. After you've checked out all those different uh, conditions, you can refer to page 25 of our user manual for a detailed flow chart. This will walk you through additional troubleshooting steps along with seven electrical tests you can do on the next page. In this next video, I'm going to walk you through how to do those tests as a second phase of troubleshooting.